Okay, in a way this was a review of what we've already been working on here, which is how to find uh, the two legs if you're given um, the hypotenuse and an angle. Uh, in a way it was different though because we weren't actually given any numbers. We were just told to pretend we had numbers for theta and v. And this is actually a pretty common type of problem in physics, where instead of working with numbers, you work with variables. So it's important to start trying to get comfortable uh, with this type of problem. A couple techniques that we used here that are helpful. Remember that it was helpful to indicate the unknowns with question marks. That's what we were trying to figure out. And the asterisks, I think, were helpful here to indicate the, inf uh, the things we were focusing on as givens. And also making a plan with asterisks for which functions we were going to be using. So as usual, if you're having difficulty with these problems, I would recommend trying to imitate um, in your scratch work the exact notation that I'm using on the board. If this problem gave you difficulty, then before you proceed, you should just redo the problem. Uh, you should keep redoing this problem until it's boringly easy, and only then should you continue uh, with the next problem in the videos. Here's another problem. Given w and theta, find w sub x and w sub y. Given w and theta, find w sub x and w sub y for this triangle. Notice that this side is w sub y, this side is w sub x, this side is w, here's the right angle, and this angle is theta. If you're having any difficulty with these problems, please remember to try to use the same notation that we've been developing in the videos. This is another problem where we haven't actually been given any numbers. Instead, we've just been told to pretend that we've been given numbers for w and theta. Well, let's use asterisks to help us remember that we're going to pretend we've been given a value for w, and we're going to pretend we've been given a value for theta, so clearly we're not going to be focusing on this angle up here. We're going to be focusing on theta, so that's another good reason to put this asterisk over here. It's also a really good idea to use question marks to indicate what the question is asking you for. The question is asking us to find w sub x and w sub y. So here's what we're being asked for. So our final answers are not going to be numbers. Our final answers are going to be algebraic expressions using the variables w and theta. Our final answers will be algebraic expressions that use the variables w and theta. We are not allowed to use w sub x and w sub y in our final answers because those are being treated as unknowns. Our final answers cannot include w sub x and w sub y, they can only include w and theta. Those are what we're treating as givens. Let's label the hypotenuse, which is opposite the right angle. Let's label the adjacent side. You can see that w sub y is adjacent to the angle we've marked with the asterisk. And w sub x is opposite to the angle we've marked with the asterisk. So this is the opposite side. Let's make a plan for which trig functions are going to be useful. Well, remember that we know that we're going to pretend that we have a number for w. We're pretending we have a number for w which is the hypotenuse. So we have to use trig functions that refer to the hypotenuse. We're not going to be able to get this w into play unless we're using trig functions that refer to the hypotenuse. Well, the sine refers to the hypotenuse, and the cosine refers to the hypotenuse. It won't help us very much to use the tangent. That doesn't refer to the hypotenuse. So here's our plan. These are the two functions we're going to be using. Sine and cosine. We can use whichever one. We can use them in any order we like, but let's start by using the cosine. Cosine of theta, that's the angle we're focusing on as our given. Cut. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent side is w sub y. And the hypotenuse is w. So I continue to recommend that if you have any trouble with these problems, write the general formula first and then plug in. Don't plug in prematurely. Start by writing the general formula and then plug in. Uh, eventually you won't need to do this, but you're if you're having any trouble with these problems, start by writing the general formula and then plug in. Cross multiplying, we get w sub y times 1, which is w sub y. And multiplying diagonally in the other direction, w times cosine theta. After cross multiplying, we have w sub y equals w times cosine theta. And actually, we're done. Remember, we were trying to get an expression for w sub y that only uses w and theta. Well, that's what we're doing. This, here we have an expression for w sub y that's only using w and theta. So this is one of our answers. 
Uh, that's the length of this side. This side is w cosine theta. Now, uh, keeping up with our plan, after using the cosine, we were planning to use the sum. So let's go ahead and do that. So, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Now, the opposite side we've labeled as w sub x. And the hypotenuse we've labeled as w. We can cross multiply. 1 times w sub x is w sub x. And w times sine theta is the product in the other direction, w times sine theta. And this is an answer, too. There's nothing more to be done. We've found w sub x in terms of w and theta. Here's an answer that's only using w and theta. If there was a w sub y over here, that wouldn't be correct, because we're only allowed to use w and theta in our final expressions for w sub x. So this side is w sine theta. This side is w times the side of theta. So here's our answers. Incidentally, they didn't ask you what this angle was, um, but how big is this angle? Pause the video if you need to. Um, how big is this angle? I hope that wasn't very hard for you. Remember that uh, we know that we're not going to be able to answer with a number. We're going to answer with an expression that involves w and or theta. Well, we know that since this is a right angle, the other two angles add up to 90 degrees. So if this angle is theta, this angle must be 90 minus theta. This angle up here must be 90 minus theta. Uh, again, uh, any answer that we have shouldn't use w sub x and w sub y, because those were unknowns, but we can use w and theta. That was a given. So if we pretend that we know what theta is, then um, we can pretend that we can figure out what this angle is over here. OK, that wasn't actually asking the problem, but it could have been. Uh, if they'd asked you, we would know this angle is 90 minus theta. I'll erase that, because that doesn't come up that much in physics in this context. Let me point something out about the last two problems that we just did. Um, so in this problem, we figured out w sub x and w sub y. And in the previous problem, we figured out v sub x and v sub y. So I hope you still have your notes from the previous problem. Uh, if you do, go, go back to your notes from the previous problem. Uh, do you see that on the previous problem, the way we figured out v sub x was by using the cosine? We figured out v sub x using the cosine. I just wanted to point out that in this problem, we figured out w sub x by using the sine, not the cosine. In this problem, we found w sub x using the sine. But in the previous problem, we figured out v sub x using the cosine. This was our answer to the previous problem, and here's our answer to this problem. So I just wanted to point out that you can't just presume that x component, you can't just presume that an x subscript indicates use cosine. Sometimes an x subscript indicates that you have to use the sine. Uh, it all depends on the details of the problem. Sometimes people get lazy about this because it is true that usually, usually the way you find a, um, a variable with an x subscript is by using a cosine. But a fair amount of the time, um, you're going to have to find a variable with an x subscript by using a sine. So don't just do these problems mechanically. Don't just try to memorize how to do that, because no single memorization is always going to give you the right answer. Instead, for every single problem, you simply need to put an asterisk in for the angle you're focusing on, and then be very clear about which side is adjacent to that and which side is opposite. And that will tell you when to use the sine and when to use the cosine. OK, so we did a couple of problems here uh, where we were not given any numbers, but just variables. Um, and uh, in most physics courses, you're going to have to know how to deal with that type of problem. In most physics courses, you're going to know how to, you're going to have to deal not just with problems with numbers, but also problems that only have variables. Um, so please redo these last two problems over and over until they're boringly easy for you.